So I want you to go through this cell that you see configured here, and I want you to give it a line notation. But before we do that, I'll point out a thing or two just to help you see that we're going to have the fairly simple setup right now. You can see here that we've got our clip on our bar. It's specifying that it's an anode, and it's showing that the electrons are flowing in our normal and traditional direction. They're flowing down this direction as well, which makes this side our cathode. Don't worry about what this means. That'll come up in a later video. Now, I also want to emphasize something that was missing in our original sketch. This little piece of foil that you see down here is going to be solid platinum. At least we're going to assume that it is. So go ahead, pause the video, and try to write your line notation for this cell. All right, so let's go through the process. You see here that we start with our zinc solid bar. So we'll have zinc solid, then we'll have a bar because we're going from phase of solid bar to something else. Even if this had been a powder that we we're going to that's crusted on the surface of the bar, that would still be a phase transition because we're going from one solid substance to a different separate solid. If we're talking about metals that are alloyed, those would all be in the same uh, phase and be in the same space, so we don't give it a phase transition. All right, but zinc solid. We then say, hey, look at our next piece. We're going to have zinc 2 plus. So we'll write that in. We'll emphasize that its state of matter is aqueous. We are given no information about its concentration, so we won't specify that. The next thing that we have in our chain is our fritted glass filter going into the salt bridge which is a phase transition. And then we have another fritted filter coming out of that salt bridge, which is also going to be our other phase transition. So the double bar meaning salt bridge. I'll point something out for us too. Notice they use sodium chloride in their salt bridge, which works great because there's no sodium or chloride in either of our two half cell reactions. So it shouldn't be an interfering species. They're also strong electrolytes with everything else that are present in the solution. So they're not going to suddenly start precipitating or coming up with equilibria or anything. They're just going to stay separated as spectator ions, which is exactly what you want. All right, so we come over to this side. Now we look at this one and we say we got some nitrate ions present, but they're really not doing anything in the chemistry that I have to care about. And they're a strong acid, so we assume that it's totally separated into H plus and NO3 minus. So in our next piece of this cell notation, we'll probably just want to write in our H plus aqueous. Now, sometimes we will write in HNO3 aqueous instead. And it's all a question of, do you need to be as specific as what you absolutely have there? Or are you only going to talk about what your active ion is and not care about what the spectator is? And that's going to be something where we need a little bit more chemical information. So you'll often see this electrode over here. We're actually going to find out this is a pretty common electrode. We're going to see this one around in lots of different formats. So we're going to have our aqueous ion. Now, we could also have our concentration that's there if we wanted it to be specific right here. Or we can specify it later or just not at all. I'm going to show it without specifying it right now. now as we follow our chain, remember that's what we're doing, we're following the direction of everything following along. We come in and we say, okay, I have my solution right here with H plus. And then it's going to bump into this surface, right? Well, actually not quite. Notice that there's these bubbles of hydrogen gas that are bubbling right along that platinum foil. So the next state of matter that we're going to encounter is going to be the hydrogen gas. Now, let me point something out about that. What do you think the pressure is on the hydrogen gas, looking at this apparatus? Your instinct may be to say, how would I know that? But ask yourself the question again. Look at this layout and tell me, what do you think? Is it going to be below atmospheric pressure, at, or above atmospheric pressure? Well, you're probably going to say it's just going to be just a tiny bit more than atmospheric pressure because this isn't a sealed container. The hydrogen's bubbling. If the pressure was lower, it would be sucking the water up and out through this hole, and we see it's not doing that. If it's sitting there with exactly at atmospheric pressure, it's not going to bubble at all, but it's not going to suck up any water either. 
So we probably have just a tiny bit more than ambient pressure, but let's go ahead and just specify that as one atmosphere, just for the kick of it right now. I can do that because I see experimentally looking at this without specifying anything more, I know it's got to be at atmospheric pressure. But I can't be more specific than one sig fig or so because I don't know the exact pressure of that room. So there we go. We've got our hydrogen gas, which is under atmospheric pressure. Now the last thing that I'll specify is the platinum wire. So that would be my line notation for this particular cell. 